Hey, what's up? It's Greg here. Hey, if you're new to the channel, we talk about business and investment and uh, also the markets. And what's of interest today is this is really bad. The Fed is really playing with fire here. Now, the reason I say that is today the market is selling off. Uh, last time I checked, the Dow was down 600 points. It's May 11th. Um, a lot of people are wondering what's going on with the market. The, the tech sector has sold off for the last couple of days. Um, you know, we might be in for a rather prolonged uh, downturn in the market here. And I've been warning for months and months and months that the Fed is behind the curve. The Fed has uh, continually be, been uh, getting more and more political. And he, uh, Powell keeps coming out with these lame uh, pronouncements that uh, any inflation that comes in is going to be, you know, transitory. I don't know how many times I've heard this. It literally goes against every single thing that we're seeing in the market and every single thing that uh, anyone, you know, who's been following these things uh, can clearly see. Now, today, very interesting in the Wall Street Journal. Uh, and again, I recommend to all my subscribers, you should be reading the Wall Street Journal if you want to be a serious investor. There was a, a opinion piece by uh, Stanley Druckenmiller, who we follow on this channel, who's one of the smartest uh, macro investors on the planet. Um, uh, Duquesne Capital is his family office. And he came out and basically said that the Fed is playing with fire. It's taking its eye off the ball. It's causing uh, massive inflation in asset prices. Um, and it's, uh, it's easy money policy. It's stance in the market currently, you know, continuing to print money, buy, buying $120 billion worth of bonds a month. And um, it's keeping interest rates at zero is really an emergency stance that was implemented during the pandemic, which was appropriate then, but now that the economy is improving at a rapid rate, it is no longer appropriate, and it's leading to distortions in the market in the face of very clear evidence that the economy is improving. Meanwhile, the government and this idiotic administration that we have continues to push more money into the system after $1.9 trillion, after a trillion that Trump did, now they're talking about another like $4 trillion in infrastructure spending, which is like 10% infrastructure and the rest of it is just nonsensical uh, spending. I have said for months that the economy is going to overheat and that is exactly what's happening. The 10-year just jumped in the last week from 150 to um, the 10-year Treasury from 150 to today it's like 162. Um, the market is single. I mean, look at every single data point you can look at. Commodities are at all-time highs. You see supply disruption in manufacturing. You see labor scarcity. You can't get people to work because the government's paying them to stay home. So you're going to see uh, rising wages, inflation in wages. You're going to see inflation in literally everything that we do. Gas prices are hitting at all time high. Guys, the Fed is playing with fire. They are screwing this up big time. Powell has been uh, political going back to the Trump days. He's overly political. He's trying to placate this administration, uh, talking about ridiculous things like uh, income inequality and, um, and, and, and things of this nature, which are no, should have be no concern of the Fed. Okay. This is like garbage. And he is not focusing on what he needs to be. He should have already begun to taper. 
and he should have already signaled that he's going to start raising interest rates and he hasn't and as a result we're going to see a print next quarter um, of over three percent and uh, it could it could even be higher on the inflation front so what I've been recommending on this channel is you know you got to hedge yourself against this stuff and um, Stay liquid, keep enough dry powder so you can take advantage of this sell-off, but also, in my mind, the best reopening play and the best way to hedge against inflation is to own the integrated oil companies, okay? When the, inflate, when the market overheats, when the um, gas prices go up, when... Um, there's supply shortages in everything because the economy's overheating. I want to own oil and gas. Okay? That is the commodity that, in my mind, is the best hedge for this. You know, forget about gold. Forget about silver and all that stuff. Forget about Bitcoin. Because all of those things, they don't pay anything. Okay? When I bought Exxon at 33, and I bought all the way up. I'm getting now on my combined, you know, weighted average cost, I'm getting eight and a half to nine percent yield on my money before capital appreciation. And I think uh, Exxon's going to a hundred because oil's going to a hundred. Okay? Now I might be wrong, I might be, you know, a little bit off or whatever, but I personally have a lot of money invested in that view, and of course the other the other plays I like, and I've been very vocal about this on this channel, is Moderna. I noticed Moderna didn't get too beaten up today, because people realize the, the potential, right? They're going to be selling, they projected a, a billion vaccines within the next year. <laughs> this is, and, and it, what I'm really investing in is their pipeline. And then the other one is Intel, which is more of a long-term uh, turnaround play. But anyway, that's the update for today. I just wanted to bring that to your attention. If you can possibly read that article um, in the opinion section of the Wall Street Journal, Stanley Druckenmiller, it really touched upon a lot of the issues that I've been harping on for months and months and months. And I hope you got value out of this. And if you did, please like and subscribe because we're going to be coming out with some more related content very soon.